good afternoon everyone uh, so welcome to the uh, final session of our ftp artificial intelligence in healthcare uh, so uh, we have arrived at towards the end of our uh, uh, ftp and uh, now we are having uh, our very own ishangu sekhia sir uh, for this session uh, so uh, ishangu sekhia sir has Uh, completed his bsc msc and phd in physics from university of delhi he is an associate professor in the department of applied sciences faculty of technology guwahati university uh, he has teaches in engineering physics data sciences to the undergraduate and post graduate engineering in science and, and engineering students he is also engaged in research activities in the areas related to computational physics material science brain science and astronomy and astrophysics history sanskrit and society happen to be his other areas of interest and yoga is one of his hobbies so i welcome you sir and thank you for joining our uh, fdp and uh, welcome uh, from all of our department and gist and uh, without any further delay i would like to hand over you the session Uh, thank you sir yeah thank you so much in fact uh, i don't know how am i am I'm, i'm fit into I, i my my expertise or my area fits into this topic even then thank you so much for this nice introduction and uh, i think uh, as in your introductory note you have pointed out that this is the penultimate session and everybody is eager i guess to wind up this uh, rather long five days online workshop so a namaskar to one and all present in this virtual mode i think all the participants are i think from across the country and a good good afternoon hello sir yeah Good Am I audible? Very good. Yeah, yeah. Why See, uh, this session is is very very challenging for me. I <laughs> hope hope you understand. This is the penultimate session, and that to post lunch session, right? We all are back after this field of tummy, right? After this lunch, good lunch, I guess. Have you had a lunch? Virtual lunch. lunch? virtual yeah, yeah yeah so the coordinator must have sent it right <laughs> yeah so yeah may i have a brief uh, kind of an introduction i mean i just would like to know how many of the participants are from science background uh, i mean maybe the coordinator or someone may volunteer and uh, just tell me because accordingly i will customize my my discussion with you because as uh, i mean i didn't talk about the topic but uh, the session itself is challenging and then the topic is more challenging see i have been told that there should be a mandatory social science related topic and uh, i mean it has to fit into the this core theme also so so I mean, my my responsibility is the is is to is to prepare a kitchery, right? So it's more challenging. So I just would like to know, uh, I mean, at what level how to customize? So uh, how many are from science background? Uh, sir, uh, most of <laughs> yes, sir. Most of the participants are from science background, but we also have from management background, yeah, arts background, I, I all are there. Yeah, how many from psychology or education or philosophy? Psychology, education, philosophy. Do you have the data, Doctor uh, Medhi? Or, or uh, you can mute yourself, please. Is there anybody from psychology? Please raise your hand and just tell maybe. I am sipping my cup of black coffee, so hope you won't mind. I am taking the liberty of. Sitting here and doing this. 
Nobody from psychology? I can see only two faces. Dr. Satyanarayana, I guess, and Dr. Sohel Buddha. The rest are, I guess, sleeping after this. Oh, one more. Thank you, Dr. Sunil Loki. Oh, one more. Good, good. Suha Singh, Dr. David. Yeah, it's good to have your teachers. It's good to have you know how challenging it is in this online thing. I don't enjoy at all if I don't, don't see the faces. See? <laughs> While interacting, it has to be like it, it should be two way. So I, I, I would like to have that. Is there anyone from psychology and philosophy for that matter? I think none. Okay. So because anyone from mathematics? Mathematics? Okay. All right, so uh, let me uh, share my screen if that is allowed. Am I allowed to share my screen? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. So, see, uh, as I, I, while talking about the topic, I said that I have been told that the AACT mandate is that. Uh, this kind of an FDP has to have at least one session where uh, you have uh, a theme related to so social sciences. So I don't know if it fits into social sciences, but I thought that we are, we are going to talk about natural phenomena, not artificial phenomena. So that's why I was hesitant <laughs> while the coordinator, my colleague, uh, Dr. Medi uh, said that I have to uh, take a session, then I was a bit reluctant because I thought that I'm going to talk about natural intelligence, not artificial intelligence. So I don't know if it fits into it. So, so when we talk about human cognition, and uh, it, we, we would like to relate it to the natural phenomena around us and inside us, then uh, probably that's how this artificial intelligence have come up. We, the human beings, are very smart. We would like to mimic what is happening around us, inside us. We would like to have it here, I mean, in, 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 in case of a gadget, right? We, were, we are so proud of our creativity. We would like to create, mimic that and create it, right? And to have control over it. So that is our psychology. So uh, the... the the new terminology that has come up, artificial intelligence. Right? So actually, uh, it, it starts all the uh, pioneer people who have been working in this field for last, I would say, 30 years, though it has come up to this stage of late for last five, seven years, in fact. This term has caught up uh, this academia. But otherwise, the basic, the ground work was started long back, 25 years at least, 25 years, 30 years back. So this artificial intelligence has got its root in, the, in, in understanding this brain, the cognition part of, of the anatomy. So uh, I thought, why not talk about it? Because I'm sure, uh, though someone must have, I mean, you, you, many of you must have uh, must have worked, must have read, must have probably must be doing some work in this area also, human cognition, human brain. But even then, at least in this workshop, probably there have been sessions on on, on artificial intelligence, machine learning, maybe right? data science, for that matter, and how in this pandemic situation, how they are relevant. Right? So uh, to give a very very uh, trustworthy and uh, reliable mechanism to detect as well as predict okay? that kind of phenomenon. So uh, why not take this topic and why not try to kind of couple two different worlds? When we talk about artistic fractals, right? Uh, we are talking about few things like, 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 mm -hmm. Sir, like sir, kindly full screen. 
so it, it's full screen now. Yeah. I am using full screen. screen. It is not visible. Uh, yes, I'm not. It's not showing full screen. Or, or, wait, 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 let me let me stop my video. In fact, that is not needed. So I I have given full screen. Should I stop sharing and do it again? Uh, uh, yes, I do it again. Okay. I have stopped sharing and then I am sharing it again. I am sharing my entire screen, in fact. Yes, entire screen only. Then, yeah, I did it. I did it. And I am sharing it now. And then, here it is. I am showing my slide. Uh, okay, yes. you are saying that I have to go shift F5 mode. F5, okay. yes, yes. Now it's okay? Yes, sir. Okay. So, um, when we talk about artistic fractals, we are talking about this, right? This picture. Just keep it in mind while discussing. I am sure 90% uh, of the people would say that this is a piece of art. What about you? What do you think? This is a piece of art? Hello? See, uh, we are we are we are colleagues, right? So let us let us pass this session two hours in a in a, in a chit chat mode. Otherwise, it will be difficult for you as well as for me, right? So we will feel sleepy. It's a challenge for me to keep you awake for two hours, and I have taken this challenge. What do you think? This is this is a piece of art. Maybe both. Maybe both. Yes. Like what, do you mean by boat? what do you mean by boat? What is the other one? If it is uh, not a piece of art, then what is it? Uh, maybe it is some mathematical structure. Some mathematical structure. Okay. You are from mathematics? Uh, computer science. Computer science. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? Please. What do you think? Don't you think this is a piece of art? This maybe, maybe this. This come on, this is a piece of art. Everybody will tell. Even the child will say, right? But there are some problems. <laughs> this is a piece of art. This is a piece of art. But now comes the mathematics. Right? Now comes the mathematics. So this is what I was talking about. This is the artistic part, and then. And then let me let me quickly take you to a different area. Let me show you a or before I show you the video, let me take you to this slide. What do you think? See, uh, when you talk about human cognition, inevitably the organ which is responsible for this cognition is the brain. And in our brain, it has been found from today's scientific analysis and yesterday's some Vedic psychology, right? We are going to talk about it, that there are five types of brain waves, right? At different uh, state of the brain, consciousness, awareness, alertness, though they are used as synonym in modern science, but in Vedic psychology, they are not synonyms. All right? We are not going into those details of these terminologies, but for the time being, we assume that they mean the same thing. When you talk about uh, cognition, in that case, awareness, consciousness, alertness, maybe, loosely speaking, maybe they are meaning the same thing. So depending on that, our state of alertness or restfulness or consciousness, it has been found that there are five types, types of brains, right? So when we are hyperactive and fully conscious after thorough, maybe prolonged meditation, right? Like the Buddhist uh, monks or anyone who has been practicing real meditation. What do I mean by real meditation? What do I mean by duplicate meditation? Maybe I can I can talk about it later. But when I say real meditation, I am talking about meditation as guided by uh, uh, Buddha, right? 
Buddhist meditation, which is actually today it is known as Vipassana. Earlier also it was known as Vipassana. Today it is practiced as Vipassana. If you Google it, you can, you can know more about it, Vipassana. So when you talk about Vipassana meditation, and uh, there, in that case, it has been found that after the meditation, your consciousness, what we call by maybe six sense, seven sense, eight sense, I don't know how many senses are there, at the sixth sense, right? Your, your, your ability to, uh, in, 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 in your, your inquisitive capabilities are enhanced. Just like our kids, the child, right? they are, uh, they are, they are, they are not only inquisitiveness, not, not only inquisitive, but intuitive, right? Al along with inquisitiveness, they have got the intuitive power, right? So that sixth sense, that consciousness is awakened means, you know, if you put an easy, uh, 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 easy uh, electrode, it will show frequency of uh, this range, in this range, right? In fact, it, it may go up to 50 hertz. It may go up to 50 hertz. So, uh, till now, in our small little uh, setup, whatever we have at Guwahati University, uh, though I have been trying, I haven't found a meditator in whose case I can detect this range. But this is, that's why uh, I myself have not been able to Get hold of a person giving me this this much of frequency, right? But still, I have picked up from from text from from literature that this is the brain wave for 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 a human being when his consciousness is awakened. Right? So anyway, that is called gamma. Calm down a little bit. You are alert. For the, for today, for example, when I am talking now. I don't know how many how many are in beta wave brain waves, but those of you who are who are responding on <laughs> and who who are there in fact with me now, so if the electrodes are put into your particular locations, then probably this can be detected, right? These are faster brain waves than this uh, <clears throat> gamma, and then alertness. This this shows you are alert. If I happen to find out this much of frequency, then I know your alertness level is high. But suppose you have visited a very, very serene place, right? hill station. Right? You are just in front of a big ocean, like uh, when the ocean is uh, maybe full of huge waves or it's come down. So in that case, when you are relaxed, your brain wave will be detected in this range. So you can see uh, the, the frequency has come down and the wavelength is increased now, is uh, weaker. So uh, this is the state, uh, there is an increase in alpha brain wave when, when you close our eyes and begin picturing something peaceful, right? Picturing, you are just starting to meditate, for example. When you close your eyes, take deep breaths and start uh, relaxing your muscles and tissues and nerves, then you reach this stage. This, as well as this, we have also been able to detect right, in our subjects. But today, uh, I, I won't be speaking much on that because I have been told by the coordinator that not too much of science. I should be emphasizing more in social science. Right? So my emphasis is, until and unless we, we understand about uh, the natural intelligence process and then the inside uh, decoded uh, uh, the logic in which the cognition uh, work and how this is related to outside world until unless that happens i cannot relate myself with you and together we too cannot relate to our surrounding and that is the danger that is why uh, this human race in this uh, state poor state today right because I can relate only with myself. Right? That is the problem. I cannot relate myself with the cosmos. Earlier, our forefathers could do that effortlessly. We cannot. Right? Because we are more into artificial intelligence instead of natural intelligence. We would like to know more about 
artificial intelligence. There is a five-day workshop on artificial intelligence in healthcare. See, you won't you won't be finding this kind of a workshop going on in case of lions, in case of tigers, in case of, in case of goats, pigs. Have you? But we human beings, the greatest so-called greatest race, right? We are conducting these workshops. All right. So that that is our need. <laughs> Except us, none is bothered about the healthcare, and none is bothered about artificial intelligence. But we are, anyway. So you go deeper, right? You go deeper means either you go to a deep state of sleep, right? Or you do you go deeper in in meditative state, whatever. So your brain wave starts uh, responding to that, and then they emit frequencies, waves in these waves frequency rates. You go further, deeper, right? So then uh, you reach at this. I have been fortunate to find two persons, two subjects, two persons, right? Whose uh, brain we have, I have been able to find this in this way. Okay, so this part is uh, science part. Right. As the topic, ingenious embedded coding. Ingenious embedded coding. This is the part. ingenious embedded coding. But the fractals, artistic fractals, need ingenious embedded coding. Ingenious embedded coding is situated inside me, and artistic fractals outside me, but also inside me. That way, this. Okay. Would you like to ask anything? Okay. All right. So this is this is for those of you who are from uh, philosophy or I don't know, maybe psychology. Do you would like to ask anything? I can hear a background. Could you please uh, mute the mic if you're not asking? Okay, thank you. Uh, see, uh, the, 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 the challenge for the brain scientists today is that. Somehow, we have not been able to distinguish the brain with the mind. But we know brain is different from mind. They, we, both of them may be related, but they are not the same entities. But a few years back, if you go two centuries, two, no, two decades uh, uh, down the line, uh, and, 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 and you know people that time, the scientists, not the, uh, not the mystics, but the scientists used to, Think that the brain is the mind, mind is the brain, but they are not. And that that is the that is the problem. That is the problem. The the the, uh, the psychic phenomena, including the dreams or other 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 psychic phenomena, like whatever you talk about, right? So split personality or your memory patterns or your uh, past memory, right? all these features are not being able to uh, get resolved. Even today, but uh, in our scriptures, you, you, you find that instead of three states right, of awareness, consciousness that we talk about, we hear about in modern psychology, are, are actually five states. We are talking about four states here, but actually there are five states. Right? So uh, they used to call it Jagrata, awakened state, and they also knew in Madhvagavatam, Sri Madhvagavatam. This is in different context, but they, they also talked about uh, this much of hearts. They didn't call it in terms of hearts, but uh, the unit was same, not in, in, in the name of hearts, because the scientists, the physicists, hearts came, came in 18th century, 19th century. Right? So they, uh, it is the number of oscillations per second only. So they also detected the Jagrata state. They didn't have, they didn't have 
uh, uh, easy or P easy that time. Tag or P easy or e and easy, P easy were not there that time, right? So those machines were fMRI, those machines were not there. But even then, they could do it. They, they knew it by how, how, how can, can anyone tell me how, 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 how was it possible? Any guess? How could they measure it? Okay, uh, I leave it to you. Just if 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 you if you have any uh, reply, please raise your hand or you just unmute yourself and uh, and tell me. Right? So you go deeper. This is called Swapna, dreaming state. After beta, we call it alpha. Same as the last slide you saw. This range may be a little bit different from what you have seen earlier, right? But they are in the same range. At least they overlap. Then Sushukti, deep sleep, right? Do you remember deep sleep? Oh, sorry. Oh, this is deep sleep. 8 to 7 to 14 and then 4 to 7. See, 4 to 7. Deep sleep, Sushukti, Theta. Yeah, this is alert, little relaxed, deep sleep. And beyond that is the fourth step, Turiya, Delta, 1 to 3 hertz, which is... In Mad Bhagavatam, this is told as non-material. Right? Sri Mad Bhagavatam, this is the reference one can find there. So here comes this coupling, coupling between uh, the so-called science we do today and uh, so-called mysticism or whatever name you give it. They used to call it Vigyana at that time. So what we call science, Vishesh Vigyanam, so that was Vigyana at that time. So we don't call it science. We call our findings. This we call science. And this we call Madhvagatam is basically a religious scripture people call, right? If you ask my parents, then they would call it a scripture, right? Which needs to be uh, worshipped and uh, revered and uh, read very, very respectfully. That is fine. But besides that, you can find these references as well. This is astonishing, I would say. This is astonishing. All right. So uh, here lies the importance of this topic, I would say. How coupled, how it, was, it, is, it is behaving. If you know about this, probably it will be easier for anyone to do, to go deeper. Whether you call it research or whatever, at least for your understanding, it will be better. That's why I thought to share this much of information with you. Okay, so I go now. I will come back to this, but I go to the front part of it. Okay. Uh, I mean, the first part. Okay, this was the topic given. As usual, for a physics guy, right? We talk about space and time. And this whole cosmos, everything is a geometrical pattern. That's it for us. Oscillations and patterns. These are the oscillations and patterns for us, right? So that is how the brain also, uh, you, can, you, can, uh, you can go deeper and you can take the MRI scans or EEGs, time series analysis, right? And you can check, you, you, you find the same kind of oscillations and patterns there as well. Right? I'm not going to talk about our recent works, right? On, 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 on these, uh, these applications, right? On, 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 on healthcare informatics, but today, uh, I have been barred from talking talking about this because this is not the topic I have been given by your coordinator. So I just I just have, have given these references so that uh, anyone interested in this, uh, we have also used some uh, some some as you can see here, some uh, uh, new tools we have we have used state of the art tools, and uh, they are also we have used some. Apart from ANN and other uh, normal tools of ML or AI, we have used something new. There is a third paper also accepted and it is under the process uh, of publication. Okay, so uh, yeah, please, please tell something. I mean, I, otherwise uh, I have to, I have to stop somewhere. Am I audible? Is it, is it sensible? Hello? Any queries, any comments till now? <laughs> no, no good, response. Sir, good. good, sir. Good, sir. Good. Jagrut, we are all. All, all Jagrut. Okay. Good, good, good. All Jagrut. 
Okay. At least yours are good, I know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so let's... this is an ancient Indian dude with far too much time on his hands. And these guys are cutting edge pioneering. Is the is the sound audible? Can you can you hear it? Even if it is not, uh, please ignore. Right? You, 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 you just get the essence of it. Brain scientists. Now, what could they possibly have in common? Welcome to the science of yoga and what it means to us. Part one. Let's go back thousands of years to the ancient world. The first mystics would leave their towns, villages, and everyday distractions to find solace in the forest. There, in isolation, they studied their own inner experience. As they looked within... See, uh, this is important. It says that in isolation, they studied their own... Own? Own? Can anyone tell me? Inner experiences, right? So... This is what modern astronomy, I do astronomy also. I'm basically from astronomy, astrophysics only. Uh, uh, so though my specialization in MSc was electronics, but uh, my PhD thesis and then later on also it's astronomy. So in astronomy also, probably you know that the, all the stars, stars means stars and planets, constellations, everything we call stars only. All the stars are made up of five uh, particles only, five elements only, right? Oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, hydrogen, and helium. So, uh, and higher elements, we call higher elements, traces of higher elements. So, and, 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 and at the exactly, almost at the same percentage, this is evident. Whether this, this star is a new one, newly born, or it's an old one, the black hole or the neutron star, right? And interestingly, these are the five elements you see in yourself. If you take out a piece of flesh or a bone and you do spectroscopy, you've come out with the same results, the same percentage of material as you find in the stars from spectroscopy. So the conclusion is you and the star are made up of the same materials. That is the finding modern astronomy has come up with. All right. So that's what probably the mystics used to tell, uh, right? The Vedic scientists used to tell, Rishis used to tell, Tat Tvam Asi, or Aham Brahmasmi, right? What is inside me is actually all over me, around me, right? I am everywhere and everything is in me. So whether you are looking into yourself, retrospect, or you are looking outside, if your view is, uh, I would say, proper, don't ask me what is proper. Just for the time being, I am using this term, word called proper. If your view is proper, if your perspective is proper, then what you come up, up, come up with uh, looking at the outside will be exactly matching with what you find out looking at the inside. Inside means this is the CPU of the machine, brain. Right? Our machine, the anatomy, in the anatomy, this is the CPU. So this brain and the outside, the patterns, more or less are same. That's what the plan is for this talk. We would like to prove it. All right. Okay. So here it said that inside feelings, uh, in isolation, they used to observe. And today we are using external uh, sensors and accessories and apparatus to, to, to gather data and then analyze outside world. Subjects we call one, two, three, four. We need data points. We analyze the data, then we answer, oh, the human brain is like that. My brain is like that. The mystics, they used to look into, into his brain and understand. That's it. Oh, sorry. This is an ancient Indian dude with far too much time on his hands. And these guys are cutting edge pioneering brain scientists. Now, what could they possibly have in common? Welcome to the science of yoga and what it means to us. Part one. Let's go back thousands of years to the ancient world. The first mystics would leave their towns, villages, and everyday distractions to find solace in the forest. There, in isolation, they studied their own inner experience. As they looked within, what they found was a myriad of thoughts and emotions, just like most people would. And also, like most people, 
These thoughts seem to cause anxiety and seem to serve no real practical purpose. But with vigilant observation, the mystics found that when they stopped feeding their thoughts, they started to get quieter and quieter. They were quite literally changing their state of mind from the inside out. The mystics in India called this practice vipassana, which means clear seeing. Today, we call it meditation. Now, fast forward to the early 2000s. Scientists studying the brain and the effect of brain exercises started to make some surprising discoveries. Brain science was still in its infancy. And in fact, up until late into the 20th century, it was still thought that the brain was solid, like concrete, unable to change in its structure. But then they discovered a phenomenon called brain plasticity. It seemed the brain could actually change. It could be shaped and rewired by exercise. Guess what they found had the power to cause structural changes? Yep, meditation. Several studies found a whole host of structural changes in the brains of people who meditated. Here are some of the changes they found. The default mode network, which could stimulate wandering and aimless thought grooves, was quietened down. The amygdala, which processes fear and anxiety, reduced in size and activity. Grey matter in the sensory regions of the brain increased, which in turn enhanced sense perception. These were startling discoveries, and it became clear that there was something to this ancient practice after all. But it's not just neuroscience. The field of psychology also owes some recent developments to this Eastern philosophy. The mystics of old times claimed this simple fact. With regular insight, you'll see that your thoughts are not real. And the recent success of cognitive talk therapy uses this exact same strategy. The subject learns to see the falseness of their own repetitive thinking. They're simply an interpretation of what is going on not the actuality of what's going on. So what's the difference, you might ask? Well, say someone next to you makes a sarcastic remark. This may trigger you to start thinking about a number of possible explanations, and they could all be completely false. For example, she did that on purpose. Everyone does this to me. They're all planning to keep me down, etc. See how these thoughts lead to other thoughts which multiply with each other? The philosophy of Vipassana is to see that these thoughts are nothing more than stories in your head. And as you get better, they stop multiplying so quickly. But don't be disheartened. It takes practice. By the way, you don't necessarily have to look like a yogi or sit like a pretzel to meditate. So whether it's breathing meditation, watching meditation, dancing or fishing meditation, whatever clears your mind is a great place to start. So this is the essence, eh? Breathing, pranayama, and then lead, leading to dhyana or tratak. This is called seeing. Actually, tratak, right? If if if, if someone does uh, practice, I mean, if if anyone from this group you do practice, you know what is a tratak, right? So uh, this is a kind of meditation. You are you are looking at the rising sun. You are looking at the setting sun without blinking your eyelids. That is a tratak. You are looking at the candle, the, 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 the flame of the candle without uh, blinking your eyelids. So that is your, that is called Pratak, right? Anything uh, you are looking at without, uh, with, with effort, you are, you are not, not letting the eyes uh, blink, right? That is Pratak. And that is a, also kind of a meditation and prelude to Hatha Yoga in yogic uh, system. Or in fact, anything you do with a relaxed mind, but focused. It's a relaxed, but at the same time, it is very, very focused. Intensity is too high. And that is a meditative mind, in fact. And that's where you happen to emit this delta and then theta. Delta and theta are, are emitted so far as the brain waves are concerned. And if that is a habitual uh, part of your entity, then when consciousness effortlessly you you reach that gamma also as and when needed right gamma means up to 50 hertz frequency very high frequency gamma so where consciousness is also very very high we're not talking about alertness we're talking about consciousness and 
and and and let me let me just ask you uh, what is the take home of this of this video can anyone uh, let us discuss i mean what 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 do you think about this what is your comment on this the video uh, just now displayed hello is the connection there <laughs> We are 35, I think. Okay. See, uh, I just would like to tell that, uh, I mean, uh, I know that uh, probably you, you, you don't want to comment on that, right? You just want to listen to my words, maybe. As I said, this is a challenge for me to keep awake. So the video was played. And I just would like to know, but for me, the take home is simple, right? So it, 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 it is, it is either you look at the outside world or you look out, look at your inside world. If you go deeper, you reach at the same place. You reach at the same output, same throughput, same results. And what is it? It is your interpretation. Actuality, what you call actuality, reality, right? It's real is a dangerous world so far as the brain is called the, the human cognition is, is referred to what is absolute for you may not be absolute for me so that is a that is an that is something we'd like to uh, focus on we would like to take home for this all right now the first part part one of the topic when you talk about uh fractals uh, that's why I asked if anyone from, from mathematics. In mathematics, there is a core area where they study fractal geometry, fractal analysis, right? Fractal is equivalent to geometry. When you talk about fractals, naturally, that what comes to my mind is uh, patterns, features, geometry, right? So, uh, and there is a systematic... Uh, way to study it and mathematicians do it in fact. and uh, when you do data analysis the, 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 the papers published i gave the references and in fact in others also we have used this fractal geometry also to detect and predict anomaly as well all right first to understand the system the dynamically evolving nonlinear or chaotic system Please uh, uh, don't get frightened by these words. Right? These, these are, if you, if you just uh, analyze one term at a time, you know what it talks about. Dynamically evolving, so it is very with time. Dynamically evolving, nonlinear, nonlinear. It's not linear. You cannot approximate as y is equal to mx plus c. The force equations are too many, and there is dissipation. There is energy dissipation, there is resistance when the pendulum moves, the bob moves, and as a result, linearity is lost and non-linearity crops up. And in that case, that kind of a system, it's more complex. The complexity is goes in multifold. Right? And there, you need to have different dynamics. That is called nonlinear dynamics. And the theory we use to study such a system, including the brain system, the human cognition, the brain, human brain, this is the, one of the most complex systems, right? We have to use these uh, smart tools from nonlinear dynamical theory, NLD. We too have used and we measure this fractal, we quantify these fractals in terms of fractal dimension. Higher the fractal dimension, richer the patterns. This is one pattern, for example. You go deeper, this is these patterns are richer in compared to these patterns. So if you suppose this picture relates to one particular system, and if I ask someone from languages or social sciences, I am not going to ask because uh, you are not in a mood, I guess, <laughs> to answer. 
so we just would like to uh, listen to my words so uh, i won't ask but yes this is natural that it gives kind of a picture of a uh, either rising or setting i don't know the sun and then uh, maybe a mountain ranges a series of mountain ranges right? so what our kids uh, they, they, they are fond of drawing right when you ask to draw a scenery they would 80% uh, of them would be drawing this kind of a scenery but if you if you do the image processing right? those of you who do image processing right? you know if you take image if you take this image and they process it and extract some information then if you take these two images then here the fractal dimension you can quantify the fractality you can I'm not going into those details, how to do it. So uh, the fractality of this image is lesser in comparison to this image. The fractal dimension of this image will be higher. Higher the fractal dimension means richer is the pattern. The patterns are richer. And those of you from biological sciences, richer the patterns, richer is the application, biological applications. Richer is the physical uh, attributes like electromagnetic uh, 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 functionalities so they will be acting uh, as as sensors very efficient sensors we know it from physics point of view chemistry point of view the surface of two particles micro particles or nanoparticles fabricated suppose one shows this kind of a surface pattern texture and one shows this kind of a surface pattern or we call texture so the texture coefficient quantifies the texture but fractal dimension quantifies the richness of the fractality and the fractality is rich leads to two very important applications biologically it is very very uh, robust uh, it will it will be very very robust biological material right you can use it in multiple ways and it's 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 it's, it's uh, physical attributes like its response to electrical signals, magnetic signals will be very, very high. Optical also, not only electromagnetic as well as optical as well, right? So they are good sensors. They're good candidates for using as sensors. And these are the ways we are, we are trying to use the people from physics, right? People from physics would like to bridge the gaps existing between mathematics and physics social sciences and science right? science and engineering <laughs> so we people are always good in uh, in in, the, in that effort to bridge those gaps so we do it that way so i just showed these pictures because of that only it, 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 these are the fractals these are the uh, these are the pictures probably uh, any artist can 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 paint can draw and in fact that's how uh, you come up with the different fabrics, different motifs, right? In 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 your in your uh, decorations or other stuff, day to day world. But at the same time, uh, at the same time, someone someone from computer science told that boat. I mean, it can be an artist uh, a piece of art, or it may be a uh, it may be a computer graphic. I mean, it it, it may be generated. Uh, through a, uh, with the help of a code, right? You do some coding, and you have a, this kind of an iteration. We call it iteration, right? You 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 have the you have the function at nth nth time step, and then you get the uh, value of that function at n plus next time step, n plus one time step, through this simple equation. Then this is called iteration equation. And using these iteration equations, you get these new terms. So you have two columns. In one column, either x or y or time, right? x, y, z in three dimension and time, four dimension. Either you take that in one column, in other column, you can, you can have this value of this function, z. And then plot it, you get this. So uh, that's why uh, you, 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 who, you who, who respond at that time initially, you are right. I mean, uh, they are both. They are both because you can generate or regenerate this picture using a computer code as well, mathematical equation. Right? Computer use a computer code and then 
uh, you use this mathematical equation in the computer code to get this iteration done in a do loop uh, uh, pattern and then you get this picture right? but in nature but in nature you find it those of those of those of you from biological sciences you you get this right the coral the the, the ocean if you go deeper and deeper yeah, you get stuff which are richer in richer in patterns in nature that is what i have tried to emphasize on that is my that is my job today right that is my job today and if i can uh, pass this message i i i think that i have been successful in my uh, in my objective is it sensible uh, uh, does it make sense hello is it boring should i stop it hello hi ah, yes sir please it's boring yes sir it's boring yeah, no 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 sir <laughs> yes sir please continue please continue okay okay continue i said interesting. i thought it's boring and i should stop <laughs> sir i want to tell you something yes yes please so, uh i am from ayurveda background you are so, from you are from ayurveda background ayurveda okay yeah. cool. i am working in uh, engineering college by please college. please be, be be bit louder uh, your voice is uh, yeah i am working yeah. in biotechnology yeah, okay. department okay thank you yeah. uh here what we are going to see my observation i wanted to share you yeah here. Uh, in the engineering background people are wanted for the pratyaksha jnana yes <laughs> means uh, they want to pursue through Direct. the sensory organs uh -huh. you are right but but whatever we are going to be uh, assuming no inferring mm -hmm. knowledge mm -hmm. so in the inferring knowledge the computational knowledge all are having a inferring knowledge mm -hmm. that is called as anumana pramana you are right and then uh, but in the anumana pramana and inferring knowledge mm -hmm. uh the pratyaksha pramana people are na it, it takes some time <laughs> you to are execute right. all those yeah. things you are right absolutely uh, so instantly whatever we are going to be designing in the system and developing in the system it's not to possible in the reality real absolutely real world. i fully agree with you uh, i so, fully agree with you and in fact that is why this is a need now in yes. fact that is why i thought that i should pick up this topic and i keep emphasizing on that one. yeah please continue uh for that going no whatever mm -hmm. we are going to be assuming and inferring knowledge mm -hmm. uh I, uh, that's what uh, the, in the pratyaksha you, you, right, uh, you are right you are right i got uh, the really impossible to become the realistic world you are right and design yeah. it in the system within one or two minutes with the apple mm -hmm. red color shape <laughs> size all those things <laughs> But if you want to have a real type of apple, no, mm -hmm, it requires mm -hmm. some time. Mm -hmm. So assuming something and uh, coming to the realistic world is is uh, highly impossible with instantaneous. We are going to with it is going to be depends on the time factor, and also with respect to the direction. What direction we are going to be thinking? Uh, here comes. Uh, I think that's why I I I I I feel and I I I consider that. I, we should be we should be emphasizing on both these both these worlds we should be we should be introspecting as well as uh, whenever required we should be able to uh, put the antennas outside outward also there are antennas the indriyas right both okay. five plus five total 10 indriyas so these are the antennas basically so they should be able to rotate in 180 degree so okay. they should be outward whenever required if if i sit with you now i am listening to you i am getting mm. some data from okay. you that that time my ear at least now i am i am listening to you so my ear should be outward right okay. so then okay. i i am receiving the signals i am processing when i am processing it is introspect i am i am again closing my indriyas and as in bhagavatam it is told om kara you have to you have to have that energy and uh, you have to you have to be able to get that uh, tuned up i mean your cpu should be running your cpu the brain should be 
given the power supply right yeah, this yeah. omkara is that power supply only and it is it is explained thoroughly if you if you those of us I, and I, I i i do it myself i i read sanskrit sanskrit happens to be my my hobby i mean reading texts and this that's why i, I know that uh, how 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 much of uh, knowledge and wisdom is there in those scriptures and yes you are right so in my opinion it's time as well as we have to be very very smart in 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 in, uh, in uh, allowing these antennas the embryos uh, rotate in uh, both the directions adequately we cannot shut down the antennas uh, uh, outward telling that only the scriptures are good uh, not these modern machines like i don't need the pad i don't need the fmri devices i don't need the easy no we need them but at the same time we cannot uh, renounce we cannot say that uh, just uh, just close your scriptures and vedic science is nothing it's all bogus you know it, that is not that is impossible that is my point you are right thank you thank you yeah anyone else okay so uh, yeah you may you may interrupt me anytime as i said we are colleagues so uh, no hesitation please and at the same time it's if, if you find it's boring you can you can you can pull the chain and you can tell me oh what you were talking about it's all rubbish <laughs> i am open for that also anyone want to debate on anything on any issue i am i am open for that as well all right yeah so uh, all these are computer generated but 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 at the same time uh, anyone from biological sciences biological sciences is there anyone from biological sciences yes sir yes sir okay okay so uh, i think uh, i think uh, you you can relate it to to the nature right so uh, yes. the, the 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 birds the the insects uh, the, the, the 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 all the features uh, all the all the entities you you find in 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 in, in on um, deep uh, in, uh, down this uh, ocean right uh, these patterns are, are visible right so uh, and in fact in astronomy <laughs> that is that is more impressive for me. So when you when you analyze constellation, a constellation may be of this part. These are the brown dwarfs, right? Some different kind of stars. One is emitting yellow, another is emitting brown. This is interesting for us also. And more or less, we see this kind, not exactly this kind of feature, but yes, there are patterns in astronomy as well. And so is the pattern inside the brain. That is important. All right. But at the same time, as I said, you can also regenerate these pictures, these these patterns using mathematical equations, polynomials, and then use a code and then get it. So coding, embedded coding. That's why in the title we use those terms. This is called quadratic map. Right? Mandelbrot. Uh, this is Mandel Mandelbrot Pija Mandel Mandelbrot uh, said, right? In mathematics, uh, those of you from mathematics, you know it. And uh, actually, these are quadratic maps in two dimensions. All right, all right, all right, all right. These are very rich right? patterns available, both in nature, outside, and in you, because you have been able to create. See, if you have been able to create, means it's inside you, inside your brain. That's why you have been able to create. Otherwise, you cannot create. That is important. One cannot create because one is not relaxed. More relaxed you are, more creative you are. Right? That is brain science tells us. This is in 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 in, in theory of chaos. This kind of a picture, I mean pattern, uh, is is actually uh, uh, actually told to be a, an attractor. There are two types of attractors mainly. One is Lorentz attractor. One another is Rossler's attractors. Those of you who are interested, you may you may dig deeper. Right? Phoenix fractal. This is really uh, interesting. I mean, there are iterated functions, right? And then uh, you can you can go to cellular automata in any any field you talk about any field. Right? You see you see the same phenomena in nature. Whatever is available, that can be recreated using a mathematical law. 
as if nature understand mathematics yes nature understand as if there is a programmer those of you who have seen the matrix trilogy matrix the movie hollywood movie you know what i am talking about right there is a programmer who has programmed it and it is behaving accordingly now i come to that area where we will see some logic now all right before that before that let me talk about this this is this is science now so called science modern day science there is this group of biophysicists from japan so what they did they did a, uh, they did an experiment right so they put on uh, this kind of a repetitive uh, stotra what we do what we call stotra right this kind of a this love and appreciation love and appreciation if we do this japa suppose 1000 malas <laughs> made it japa right you do so the crystals right? glass of bottles the water bottles the water patterns if you do imaginary if you do imaging of this take photographs of these crystals using tam or sam right? scanning electron microscope or tunneling electron microscope what we use for material sciences you get these kind of patterns but at the same time the water molecules the water bottles where you keep repeating these these words you make me sick i will kill you you make me sick i will kill you right after 6 hours this is the pattern same water same bottle but this uh, repetitive words which was recorded and it was it was kept in the speaker right and later on when they they were uh, they were found they got this don't you think this is remarkable right so uh, and this is where the uh, importance of meditation japa right stotram they come into play and and in fact you know all of you know that inside us also we have got how much percentage of water it's majority right excuse so me sir are, yeah <laughs> sir when you when you are Hello? you are talking about japa are you yeah please no. please please be a bit louder ma'am Ah, uh, yeah. When you are talking about Japa, right. and here they have just put a piece of paper onto the water and see the structure. Now, mm -hmm. when we do Japa, is there any way to measure how the brain waves changes or the exactly. structure? Exactly. Yeah. We have been doing it. We have been doing it at, uh, at our setup at Bhante University. Yes, we have uh, seen uh, how fast you can alter your brain waves, but we okay. don't have an fMRI uh, MRI machine. So, uh, I have our group. we have not been able to map it right otherwise e easy signals yes we have seen and in fact i could have shown you the uh, shown you the video uh, i don't know in this laptop on this i don't think it is there i cannot show it but yes we have done it we have <laughs> it has been tested on me only my brain <laughs> yeah now okay yeah. from if i want to do that one Uh, mm -hmm. How how is it how can I can proceed, sir? Because we are thinking we can give the, some projects on these things to our students. So how can I proceed for that, sir? Is it? Uh, I mean, should I have to proceed with some equipments for that? Yeah, yeah. First, it? yeah. Most important part is you have to get at least a 16 channel easy uh, capture machine like that integrated machine, right? The headgear okay. and and the and the the hardware part that that is that is required. Okay. Okay. at least 16 channel 32 channel will be good enough so that kind of a device has to be there and the related software comes uh, uh, i mean with it only the hardware part so there are many vendors you can search and uh, depending on your locality in your area uh, mm -hmm. you, can, you can you can you can you can call and you can you can they will visit your college or university and the 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 processing will be maybe maybe done right it's okay. so okay. Uh, the, the the basic apparatus that you need is your uh, easy easy 16, easy machine uh, yeah with okay. uh, if possible if your budget allows go for a 32 huh. channel okay. and okay. always be careful about the software they are they are they are they are giving you i mean what kind of is it a licensed software is it okay i mean what which which will allow you to publish your work right that will be important uh -huh. so please please uh, have a chat with the guy the distributor first Okay okay thank yeah. you sir thank you so much welcome 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 so this is uh, the same kind of an experiment 
it was a very relaxing song and if you google it will find and this is a heavy metal music <laughs> that's why i keep telling my students right be careful when you when you uh, go for this kind of a party so your brain patterns your your whole anatomy will go into the this bizarre step right but if you listen to some soothing music classical music anything soothing right this will be the pattern inside you this is interesting okay so this let me since i'm talking about human brain how much time do i have dr medi are there am i done this is 330 338 right how much time do i have jpm do you hear me yes sir we have time sir okay okay so so let me want to learn all the so, major uh, parts of your he, he he is talking about the human brain i mean using a very simple model just just see how 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 simple it is to know about the brain brain i'm going to show you how and all you need are your hands stretch out your hands in front of you see how the skin on this side of your hands is darker than on the other side that's just like the outer layer of the brain called the cortex or the gray matter the outside of the brain is darker than the inside because it's lined with neuron cell bodies cell bodies are also called soma cell bodies keep the neuron healthy and functioning the muscles inside your hands represent the white matter of your brain white matter is made up of neuron axons axons carry information from one neuron to another but it's important to remember that two neurons never really touch so uh, this these axons are the connectors and they connect the uh, independent cells right we call neurons make a fist with your hands you can form a shape that's similar to your brains this is how human brains are able to squeeze so much gray matter cortex into the small space within your skull now take your hands cross your wrists and make the back of your hands touch each other This will help you remember that the left hemisphere of your brain controls the right side of your body, while the right hemisphere of your brain controls the left side of your body. Look closer at your hands. The area where they touch represents the corpus callosum. The corpus callosum is a bundle of nerves that connect the two hemispheres of the brain and help them to communicate with each other. I like to think of it as the Golden Gate Bridge of the brain. Your wrists represent the brain stem. This brain corpus callosum, this this uh, interface of these two brains, this uh, this is so important, and it is very important to understand how how uh, deep breathing, that is pranayama and dhyana, they help to uh, uh, to to allow these two hemispheres meet and interact. Until and unless that happens, there is always a gap. in learning i mean in teaching learning those of us because we all are all of, all of us are involved in teaching learning effective teaching learning we call about obte today right so objective uh, based right so that way it is very very important for a holistic learning uh, how important it is to uh, make them interact make them talk to each other and in in there is a video i don't have I, i don't think we will be having time to go through that video in maharshi mahesh yogi in transcendental meditation tm they they have shown that this is the this is where uh, this tm transcendental meditation uh, it comes into play i mean how to make these two hemispheres function in rhythm right so brain efficiency gets enhanced the moment that happens stem sits at the very bottom of your brain. It's the most basic part of your brain and regulates important life functions like breathing, your heart rate, sleeping, eating and more. This is also where signals from the right side of your body cross over to the left brain and where signals from the left side of your body cross over to your right brain. Your arms represent the spinal cord. The spinal cord extends down your back. It sends and receives information from the rest of your body. Let's focus on the left hemisphere. Your front fingers represent your frontal lobe. 
If you remember front fingers frontal lobe, you'll be able to remember that this is a part of your brain responsible for complex and abstract thought. It sits right behind your forehead and it's the most advanced part of your brain. The frontal lobe helps you to make plans, imagine possible futures, and helps you to control your emotions. The most important part, right? As a learner, this is the most important part. इसीलिए बोलते हैं कि जिसका कपाल बड़ा है वो भाग्यवान है नहीं <laughs> हम लोगों का ये कहावत है तो जिसका ये फ्रंटल लॉब फिजिकली भी बड़ा है थोड़ा सा इसीलिए भाग्यवान बोलते हैं बिकॉज योर सिटी यू हैज गॉट मोर मोर सेल्स राइट टू डू कॉम्प्लेक्स एंड एब्सट्रेक्ट थॉट्स आई मीन टू एनालाइज कॉम्प्लेक्स थिंग्स doesn't finish developing until your mid 20s which is why a lot of kids and teenagers can sometimes do impulsive things if you extend your index yeah in that is also important it has been found that up to brahmacharya that is 25 years maybe 26 years there is a possibility of, of enhancing you can through some kriyas right kriya i am using those of you do who do who are into yoga you know what is a kriya so through kriyas probably you can enhance the efficiency of that frontal lobe you can increase the capacity of that in uh, uh, frontal lobe and that's why in our system right uh, this chatur ashram right so that that brahmacharya was up to that due that part till that you have the uh, capability and accordingly there were procedures how to do it it'll be you'll see the part of your hand that represents the parietal lobe. Parietal. The parietal lobe integrates all the sensory information in your body. Your sense of space, navigation, and touch all get relayed here. But your brain doesn't prioritize each part of your body equally. Take a look at this homunculus map of the primary motor cortex of the brain. You'll notice that the brain prioritizes information from your hands and face. Now look at the back of your hands. You'll notice they look like eyes. This will help you to remember the occipital lobe, the area responsible for your visual information, and how it's located in the back of your brain. Have you ever hit the back of your head and seen stars? It's because you hit your occipital lobe. Take a look at your thumb. See how it can lift away from the rest of your fist, but remain attached to your hand. That's similar to the temporal lobe. The back of the temporal lobe is connected to the parietal and occipital lobes. but the front section can be lifted away from the rest of the brain the this temporal is, this is kind of the ram of of the modern the computer the lobe is responsible for understanding sounds and speech here's how i remember this the thumb looks like a temporal lobe which is important for talking if we take a closer look at the temporal lobe we'll find the limbic system the limbic system is responsible for emotions learning and memory inside we'll find the amygdala an almond shaped structure which is located just below where your thumbnail is the amygdala is responsible for basic emotions further inside your thumb is the hippocampus it's sort of where the bone is in this part of your thumb the hippocampus is responsible for learning and memory that's it now you've got a portable model of the brain that you can <laughs> take with you and use whenever you need it Re- Oh. Create it with your own hands a few times and customize your model by making your own mnemonics. What? Okay, is it? Uh, does it make sense? All right. So, uh, see, uh, in nature, whether your anatomy or the anatomy of of any animal, the tree, the the hill, the mountain, anything you you see around you. until unless human uh, interferes until unless that is the condition you see the symmetry you see the geometry you see the mathematics right there is a particular ratio of of your height and this length from your os to your foot okay right? this ratio there is a particular exactly same ratio is fulfilled by the length from this to this and then elbow to the fingertip there is the same uh, ratio between between say, uh, yeah so uh, from here to here and then from here to here eyes to this from here to here 
and from here to here, from here to here, from here to here, from here, that is soldier to the fingertip, and then from here to here, and here to here. These ratios comes out to be 1.6, right? It is the fixed ratio 1.6, and that 1.6, that 1.6, constitute the Fibonacci series, right, or sequence in mathematics, and it follows a mathematical equation. In fact, this is also an iteration. You need the, you need the, one and one to get the two. If you if you just put this here, so F2 that is two comes from one. Just before it, the term, the value of the term, just before that, one, and then one. One plus one gives you the two. How do we reach three? Because two plus one is three. Two plus three is two plus one gives you the three. How do we reach five? Three plus two is five. Three plus five is five. So you got the sequence, and and then. The ratio of any two with respect to this gives you 1.6. That is important, and that is seen in case of the plants also. If it is, if it is the seed is proper, natural, not uh, uh, genetically improvised, then you see this ratio there also. You measure the length, you see this ratio. This is amazing, right? So this is amazing. That was the France. Uh, uh, no, the Italian mathematician Fibonacci or Fibonacci. He, uh, while trying to solve this rabbit problem, probably you know this rabbit problem, right? It's from one pair of rabbit within a given uh, time uh, time period, how many rabbits will be there? That was the problem. So assuming that from one pair there will be one pair of kids, one male, one female, and then. From here, there will be two pairs hey, go on doing that, right? Anyway, so he, he, while trying to solve it, he came up with this sequence and fulfilled by the natural processes. And hence, it is followed by the brain also. If you take the images and if you take the pattern of the, of the, of the, of the uh, not the pattern, the sizes and shapes of your, of your, of your uh, different components, you see this happening and that is natural if you don't find out that 1.6 right then it is artificial <laughs> that is how you can distinguish what is natural what is artificial but if you once you know that this is natural then the artificial thing can be created to appear look like i mean to to appear like uh, like natural if you maintain this 1.6 today you know that is 1.6 in fact in astronomy it is very very important number 1.6 1.6 times the solar mass, if that is the initial mass of a star, the star will die as a neutron star. That is called Chandra's limit, right? In astronomy. Those of you who are from physics and astronomy, you know it. So that is one point I, I wanted to tell you, in fact, while, while discussing it. Right? And, 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 and same is the case here. In case of, in case of this triangle, so, uh, so uh, this is called devil's staircase, in fact. In, 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 in data science also nowadays, uh, some a very small fraction though, some people are trying to use these concepts. So we are trying to use this. You can see a triangle inside triangle. This is called multifractals. In mathematics, these are multifractals. If you zoom in, you see the same pattern. Zoom out, you see the same pattern, right? So, uh, so this multifractal analysis, if you Google, you'll see, any data science, any uh, image processing, it is very, very handy tool and we use it today. And, and so is the case with the brain, right? So if you do some neural networking, ANN or uh, NNN today, in case of machine learning, if you uh, deep learning, in fact, if you use that, you will see. So, so you, they, also, they also satisfy certain, certain uh, patterns that is important. I'm not going into leak, uh, details here. Some references are there in, in, in this analysis, right? All right, so I don't need to go into details. It is already boring, I guess, right? So I, I'll skip this. I'll skip this. This is science part, so I can skip, I guess. <laughs> this is image processing. Is there anyone who does image processing here? 
electronics or, uh, or, 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 or anyone from physics? Hello. Sleeping. Hope the coordinator has sent you some tea and snacks. Why don't you send some tea and snacks, Mr. Coordinator? People are feeling leggy. In the chat box, you can send some virtual tea, snacks. Please send. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, this self-similarity. Self-similarity is uh, fractality. While, while I was saying, no, if you zoom in, you see the same pattern as you happen to see when you are zooming out. Just like, just like tea leaves, tree leaves, a uh, particular tree, any tree, fern, for example, you see this uh, self similarity. Right? So, this is in nature, it is abundant everywhere you see these patterns. Right? And uh, that's what I mean, it, it, it's a piece of art also, but you can reproduce in the computer. You can reproduce this, this, this flakes or or, uh, or, or, or sand dunes or farms, right? These are these can be reproduced also using some 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 uh, simple uh, iterations, right? iterated uh, equations. You can, you can do it. Uh, we do it. I mean, uh, I'm not going into details, right? Okay. So if I if I don't talk about this chaos, I I won't be doing justice when you talk about. Uh, uh, human brain and for that matter uh, cognition and then try to relate it with, with natural processes, other natural processes. So basically it's it's simply I can tell that uh, when the number of variables if you talk, if you it, it kind of a matrix oh, and the complexity so higher the complexity right and the and the, and the number of variables is many, so this is the random process. This is noise, right? random white noise, random process. They are nuisance of our signal analysis, image, image processing. So we want to get rid of that. There are procedures how to get rid of them. Otherwise, if the variables are few, even though it is complex, we can handle the system. They behave at least. You know the behavior, you know the equation, and you can study it. But the mechanics the laws physics physical laws you are going to apply will be different so we call it non-linear but if, if if it is complexity is lesser then you can you can afford to use linear mechanics newtonian mechanics we call it lesser forces so newtonian mechanics will do these are the regular periodic or regular processes this is a, a, this gives a general perspective of any any uh, physical entity under the study. Being from um, um, be from be from economics or social sciences to to rocket sciences, space sciences, astronomy, <laughs> right? So everything, whatever you, you name it, and it will it will it will it will be either of these four quadrant. You can place it. Right? All right, I'm not going into details. These are the attributes. I can skip. I think. I think, I think you can skip. Chaotic systems are very, very, uh, I would say, interesting and useful to study. Uh, I can skip this as well because benefits of meditation, we know it, no? Who doesn't know the benefit of meditation today? <laughs> Everybody knows. So I know I, there is no need because that is not the emphasis of today's topic, but still. It's for the for the sake of completion. This has been put the melatonin, right? Sleep hormone. The please please up hormone. They their percentage gets enhanced. And cortisol. Somewhere it is written, I think. Cortisol, stress hormones. Cortisol, the dangerous hormones, right? So they are lesser. It has been found. You do meditation, right? Panchakosha, simple meditation. Panchakosha meditation for 15 minutes. Right? You can measure. You can you can take. You are you are under stress. Give some blood and get it tested. Do some 15 minutes panchakosa meditation. Again, repeat it and check this cortisol. You will see the drastic change. Right? 
Same is the case with melatonin. Melatonin should be high, cortisol should be less. Apart from other hormones, these are the two prime things. All right, statistics, statistics, okay, nobody is interested. Yeah, this is the alpha, beta, gamma, delta we have talked about. So, how much time? How much time? We have some 10 minutes. Yes, sir, we have more than 10 minutes, sir. Okay, okay. So, uh, okay. see, probably, probably uh, many of us will practice different types of meditation, I'm sure. At least for 10, 15 minutes, we all do irrespective of the faith uh, religion we belong to right uh, so we do it we, we, we talk to ourselves we, we try to make it blank i mean we just want to get rid of our thoughts patterns anything all the ideas coming in and they should go out that's it when you are empty and hollow that is the state you would like to reach at. that is the objective of this meditation but what actually uh, happens right how it happens in terms of brain science uh, Maharshi, Maharshi Yogi has got a beautiful uh, research setup. That is what they're they're going to talk about the research findings so far as the brain easy signal uh, with the help of easy signal so far as the brain function is concerned. Let's see. Transcendental meditation, transcendental meditation TM, individual number one. So here we have an example of experience of Marshi's Transcendental Meditation Program. Experience the the screen PM practitioner. Here. You can see in the top we have the blinking cursor. It shows you the left front EEG. The second line shows you the right front EEG. And the bottom line shows you the oscillation from more to less of EEG coherence between the left and right frontal alpha EEG. You can see that the red line is at 0.9, where maximum is 1 or 100%. And so the scale goes from 0 to 100%. So anything, anything, uh, whenever this line is crossed or it is around this line, we are happy because the left and the right are are in rhythm right they are coupled they are in coherence that is the objective that is what i was talking about when the brain model was explained that is the objective when our both the hemispheres are in in rhythm they are functioning in, at rhythm and we're going to continue now to we'll see what happens when the person starts meditation the person is starting meditation now they'll start in just a moment ah now you can see Notice when they started meditation, it took them about less than a half a second. See here also individual coherence. Notice the high areas. amplitude of local coherence in the front, on the left, and the right hand side. And coherence. Is and the similarity in the signals, just the waveforms look pretty similar. And the similarity is borne out by careful calculation of the EEG coherence. Let's just pause here. So we paused. You can see that right at the start of TM. Coherence maximized and stayed most of the time above 90% or 0.9, which is extraordinary because the normal range of coherence is somewhere between 30 and 40% for an individual. This individual has very good brain coherence, even when they're not meditating, which is averaging around 60%. So when they start meditating. So uh, for this meditator, 60% was a natural Without meditation, he or she had 60% of coherence. After meditation, 90%. Within less than a second. Within the less than a second. This is individual number two. Here's our second person. Again, the left frontal alpha EEG on top, the right frontal alpha brainwaves second. And the third is the relationship between the left and the right frontal alpha, the coherence, which goes from minimum zero to maximum one, or from zero to 100%. And the red line is 90 percentile. You can see the individual fluctuates. She started meditation right here. You can see she spends most of her time 
hovering around 90%. There was a little re adjustment in her chair during her meditation. She continued. So there it, it, is, it was plummeting. It is going down because she was adjusting her chair. Then coherence was lost. It used to be quite stable above 90 percentile, which is quite a remarkable thing. Individual tree. And here's our third subject. On top is the left frontal EEG brainwave patterns, the right frontal brainwave patterns of the CEO, and below is the coherence between the left and right hand sides of the brain. This is the third individual. You can see that this individual's coherence oscillates between about 20% and 100%. We'll see when they start meditating quite soon. What happens to the EEG? Look at this. Local coherence. Notice that right at the beginning of TM, within about less than a second, there's a maximizing and a plateauing of EEG around and usually above 90 percentile, which is quite remarkable. You notice that this individual will continue to remain in that state, even though they're in a testing situation. Very high, stable coherence between the left and the right side of the front of the brain which is responsible for all the executive functions, the high-level executive functions. Notice how the EEG continues along very high levels, very high levels of EEG alpha wave power as well. So brains, uh, not only coherent, the plasticity can also be uh, manipulated. You can you can have different size as well as shape. That is also possible. Okay. So, uh, anything you would like to ask or comment? Okay, let me show some MRI MRI pictures. So beta wave, beta wave relates to beta wave relates to alertness. <laughs> now, when I am asking something, those of you who are alert, you can respond, right? This alertness is also enhanced, right? After meditation, frontal, parietal, and occipital, and the linkage before and after so these are known to us now we are not going into details uh evoke potential okay you are not is there anyone who is who is working on these areas brain science probably you can relate to what are eps okay so I uh, just skip this, skip this. Yeah, these are some techniques, right? Uh, Ma'am, who was asking me, I mean, what are different uh, apparatus or how to proceed? This is the simplest one I was referring to. But uh, but yes, if you have access to PET, positron electron tomography or functional MRI, magnetic resonance imaging. So uh, you, you can do you can a lot of things there. Simultaneous EEG and fMRI, simultaneous MEG and PET. Right? If you have that, uh, it will be wonderful. That is how 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 it proceeds. Okay, okay, I can skip. Uh, I don't know if it. Yeah, this is the what I was talking about. This is me. <laughs> this is the headgear, man. I was I was trying to show that this simplest exercise we we're, we we're, we we're given in the primary school. You remember, all of us remember, right? This helps the connection, the axons, how the neurons are connected, one can see. Why this Uthak Baitak? 
How many of us did it? Do you remember? <laughs> so this was done because of enhancing this interaction only. You can see uh, higher local coherence is there. So, colleague and my, our students, they are also there. We have done uh, uh, some other experiments also. I, I subjected myself for these for this, uh, testings. Stotra, including Stotra and other things. Whatever little practice we do, uh, for I do meditation and pranayama, reading also. Anyway, so uh, it is not just, yeah. So, yeah, you can see this is the baseline before. This is the after. You can see that these areas are enhanced, see? So connectivity is higher after meditation. That is important. So only neurons are there. That is not enough. They have to be well connected also, the, at least in the prefrontal cortex, where the complex analysis need to happen. So this is the area. Okay, so same here. This is enhanced here in, in, in comparison to this. Okay. Oh, sorry, ulta, just reverse of it. You, you don't need it. This is the relax, relaxation part. This relates to creativity. So you need lesser activity. So it is, it is, it is loosened. It is lesser now after meditation. Parietal law emotions and other things you have more control over your emotions you are not impulsive right okay so yeah and, uh, these are those of you from biological sciences you may be interested that uh, after meditation these uh, these chemicals hormones right their their levels are uh, i mean those of us those of the chemicals which are, that are needed they are enhanced after meditation mean you see it was baseline was 1.31 it is 1.45 right? so that is what is important this is cbf is also and these are the fmri fmri images of the of the of the brain and uh, what it shows is that connectivity gets enhanced. That is more important. So there are many, many uh, publications on, 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 on many different aspects of this related to attention, related to consciousness, even related to stimuli, external stimuli. So, yeah, this is there. I, I just hit and... Uh, so uh, these chemicals, the GABA, serotonin, right, or, uh, these are increased, uh, uh, and then melatonin increased, whereas cortisol is decreased, right? In terms of in terms of brain, and in CNS, central nervous system, also you see uh, significant changes, positive changes from meditation. So our effort is to use it as a stimuli, use it as a as an interve intervention for for enhancing the activity or relaxing the brain as and when it is required. So suppose someone doesn't know meditation, if you can create some app, Android app or web based, so you just you just use that using your earphone or or whatever uh, gadget, and then you reach that that brainwave. So that is the idea. In fact. That is how people are working. Yeah. So, what is it? Oh, we all music. Know intuitively this is the last music. I wind up. That, that music is a very, very powerful. She is a very renowned, uh, I would say, experimentalist. So she is working in brain science, and particularly her emphasis uh, to use music as a therapy. Know that it brings people health and well-being but we're not quite there in terms of understanding on a scientific level why that is 
My name is Grace Leslie, and I study brain music for a living. Grace and Leslie. I also conduct brain music research at Georgia Tech in Atlanta. The goal of my research is to develop new kinds of music technologies that are going to use brain and body signals and see how we can incorporate these into new kinds of music, new kinds of musical interfaces that are going to bring us health and well-being. Healthcare. Eh? <laughs> One of Natural the fun parts about my job is I get to direct the Brain Music Lab, which I started here when I arrived. You can Google One also, Brain Music Lab. ongoing in the Brain Music Lab is playing heartbeats with people. What we're finding is... Yeah, after, apart from brain, she's interested in heart also, ECG also, she takes. Actually, a effect that this heartbeat listening has on your ability to feel what somebody else is feeling. Another student that I'm working with, he's applying all different kinds of machine learning methods to actually predict imagined music or listened music from having only their EEG data. So what are all these brain and body signals that I'm talking about? I can start out with EEG, which is my favorite one. EEG stands for electroencephalogram. And this is a way that we place sensors, like the cap that you see here, on somebody's scalp. And these sensors are measuring voltage created deep inside the brain. When that I'm is called EDA. EDA, I'm referring to electrodermal activity. This is a way to measure how aroused our central nervous system is. When I'm talking about ECG, this is the acronym for an electrocardiogram. What we're picking up is uh, voltage. And we can attach these in a particular um, configuration around the heart to measure a lot of different features of somebody's heartbeat. Over several years of practicing what I like to call brain body music performance, I started out being very focused on these new interfaces that is going to record input from the way that my body signals perform on stage, turn them into music so that I can learn how to use that in an expressive way. I developed a new kind of algorithm that takes an incoming EEG signal and I convert that into sound on the computer. And I learned how to manipulate these brain waves to produce different kinds of sounds in a musically performative way. I started to recognize that the most powerful way that I can influence this brain activity while I'm on stage is actually to pay attention to the body instead. When somebody asks me about uh, how I tune my instrument, I would have to say that tuning happens not from me tuning the instrument itself, it happens from me tuning my body to a particular See, this is what uh, my colleague from Ayurveda was talking about, right? And I say that I also agree. She is, she is referring to that only. How to tune the instruments, right? She is saying that the tuning happens from experience and you have to tune your body. My heartbeat might be 70 times per minute. Oftentimes when I'm performing, that will drop very much or rise very much depending on how much I'm holding my breath as a result of playing these really long notes on the Eventually, I developed a way to manipulate my breathing pattern on stage in order to create this kind of expressive arc and to reach a different kind of physiological state in order to express the sense of deep calm. A lot of people ask me, you always have to make music that sounds like a warm bathtub. The musical nature of this, the sound qualities, the timbres that I produce, that is actually very inherent to this idea of inviting somebody to synchronize with me. Mm -hmm. What I'm doing is developing music that I believe sounds very new. And it's something that is exciting for me to share this new experience with my audience. Thank you. Don't you want to thank her? Hello. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. So that is what I mean. That, with that, I end. In fact, 
it, this is where I started, and uh, this is where we started, and this is where I am here. So uh, this brain music lab, in fact, the last video is is talking about what what I have been trying to tell for last one and a half hours, in fact, in fact, two hours now. <laughs> so cognition, where the two worlds meet, the flute, right, and the coding. You have to tune properly. Then it there is synergization, right? You get uh, constructive interference, right? And uh, and EM that is called right left hemispheres coherence, brain coherence. So with that, I end. Thank you so much. You, you have any queries, any comments, anything to ask? Please go ahead. I stop it here. You have any questions? You may type also. Thank you. Not audible. Audible. Okay. So no questions, no comments means everything is, everything is, please fill up a blank, everything is, over the head. <laughs> The PM? Are you there? Thank you so much, all the participants. Wish you good luck. Bye. Thank you, sir. You are not audible. JPM, you are not audible. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, I'm audible now. Yes, sir. Audible, sir. Yes, yes. you are audible. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you for being with us and uh, for providing us your knowledge and time and out of your busy schedule. And I thank you from all of our department and our uh, GYST and Guwahati University as a whole. And uh, thank you for being with us. And I hope uh, you will be joining us for the very lecture session. So uh, we'll be starting our very session uh, in a minute. So sir, uh, please do join. <laughs>